Today we're taking a look at the D-Link Cover Whole Home Wi-Fi Network. This is a tri-band Wi-Fi router, very similar to the Google Home and other products and the idea that it allows you to have multiple devices across your home for one single Wi-Fi network to help you eliminate any dead spots. They say this will theoretically cover up to 6,000 square feet through a house. It's a high performance um, system meant for streaming and gaming and all kinds of other devices. Now, it um, was supplied to us by D-Link. Thank you for the review unit. We're going to start off with a little unboxing now, show you everything that comes with it, what the devices look like, and then in this same video, I, after I've tested up and um, tested it for a while, I'll come back and let you know what I think of it. Now, a few things to know about this device, of course, it has the iOS and Android apps to manage it, but it does work with Google Home and Amazon Alexa devices, so you can actually manage your device through that. Uh, let's show you everything that comes with it, and then I'll be right back to show you how it works. But right here's the setup guide, very simple setup instructions, just um, looks like three easy steps once you connect it and set it all up. But we'll get to that a little later in the video. Let's get to the actual devices themselves. So this is the Wi-Fi routers. Pretty standard, looks like a, uh, it's smaller than a two liter, I would say of uh, Coke or whatever you're drink of preferences, but it is a nice white look with a kind of a brushed bronze almost looking at the bottom here. Um, kind of a bronzy color at the bottom, not sure if that's coming through. Um, on the side, or on the back side I should say, you have two ethernet jacks, a power cable here, and um, a power reset button. So pretty straightforward standard, not much to say about the device itself. Here's the other satellite of it. Again, identical. My only main complaint here is there are two only ethernet ports. I'm assuming one, one of them you plug your ethernet in from your home internet to go to that, and then the other will allow you to go out. So if you're looking for a device that has multiple ethernet ports, this may not be the one for you. Uh, but if you're like me and most of the, everything you do is on Wi-Fi, that's probably not a big issue for you. Uh, let's keep on going looking at all the cables that come with it. So quick ins um, install card again, just, shows you how to get the apps to set this up. You will need a smart device like a phone, tablet, or computer to finish the enabling on this. So you got two power cords, pretty standard white look to it. One ethernet cable, uh, which is gold tipped, which is pretty cool. It's fancy looking ethernet cable. It is a flat cable, so you can kind of hide it. I'm gonna guess that's about three to four feet of cable right there, just eyeballing that. And a second power cable. So that is everything that comes with it. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Nope, that is everything that you get. So you get one main base station to connect your ethernet to from your cable modem or DSL. Second base station you can link to each other so that this can fill in a dead spot for instance, if this is in your basement and your upstairs gets a little weak, maybe you put this on the main floor to boost that signal up to the upstairs. Um, warranty cards, legal statements, ethernet, and two power cables. So I am now gonna go and set this up, test it out, let you know what I think of it. My only complaint though about the hardware is this looks nice, it feels nice, it's a good quality feeling product, doesn't feel cheap, is that there is only two ethernet port cables on the back. So if you're looking for an area where you could put multiple ethernet devices, you may not want to go with this particular model. If again, you're like me and most of the things you have are on Wi-Fi, and you may only want one ethernet cable in your house to a computer or something, then this will be fine, you'll be all set. So hang tight, I'll be right back. So I've been playing around with the Cover whole home Wi-Fi network for a little while now, and there's a lot of things I'm impressed with it, there's a few things I am not. Now let's start off with the setup. The setup was super simple. They actually give you this little setup bar here with this little, um, QR code, you scan that with your phone through the D-Link Wi-Fi app, and it does all the setup for you. Now, it does come to a point where it's like, hey, turn off your mobile phone data so that forces you to connect to the um, Wi-Fi, even though there's no data on it yet. But it walks you through everything, explains how to do everything, very simple setup, and creating a username, creating a password, all that kind of stuff, maybe 10 minutes from beginning of the unboxing to plugging in to having it finished set up was about in total. Um, so I was very impressed. Now one thing I did not notice it do any updates, so maybe if you buy one and it has an update to do, it could take a little bit longer. Um, I did not use their ethernet cable. It was not quite long enough. 
And the downside with that I did notice is that this is very, very tight little area here. To try to squeeze this black cable in because of this plastic over here, I don't know if you can see that, it made it a little difficult to try to squeeze in the cable into the proper port when you have a slightly thicker cable like I do with that black one right there. So um, it's a little tight, it's a little snug, and with the ethernet from the modem, you only have one ethernet cable to be able to use. Um, so keep that in mind. If ethernet's important to you, again, that will be an issue. But it's a very simple setup. It does have only one Wi-Fi network. So if you have like say a standard Netgear or D-Link router, you've probably seen the, um, the regular network and then the five gigahertz network. Now this one does offer five gigahertz, but it's smart choices, I guess I would say. It decides for you if the 2.4 or the five gigahertz is fine. Now, if you've watched my review of the Orbi from Netgear, which is a similar device, you knew I was very upset that my Roku TVs and uh, Fire TVs, etc., were not being put on the five gigahertz and they weren't getting a full speed. This seems to do a much better job in deciding which device goes to which network. When I did a Wi-Fi test, I was getting similar speeds as I got from my Netgear Nighthawk in testing. Now for the area of covering it, now it advertises 6,000 square feet or up to 6,000 square feet. I would say 6,000 square feet of a home is rather generous. That's because most of us don't have a 6,000 square feet. But I think in most three, four, even a 5,000 square foot home, this will probably do a successful job covering it. The real benefit to this may be, like in my home, um, I always had an issue with the backyard. I like to sit on the back porch, enjoy the sunshine, listen to the birds, and surf the web. And the Wi-Fi network was a little weak there. Um, so in like a standard, let's say 3,000 square foot home, if you have an issue like that, a network like this would be perfect for being able to go out in the backyard and still get Wi-Fi if you place them in the right spots. Um, and setting up the second um, satellite was super simple. I plugged it in after I followed the steps for the main unit, plugged it in, and the app automatically connected it. I didn't have to do anything. It took about not less than a minute from the time I plugged it in to the time it said, hey, you're all set, you are now connected. And it worked. So super simple setup. My main complaint here too is with all of these whole home mesh networks, is I want the ability to say, I want this device on a 2.4 gigahertz network and I want that device on the five gigahertz network. That would be what I would ideally want. I would also like more ethernet ports, the ability to, in my case, have this in my home office where I can hardwire in my, my streaming PC for when I do streaming and then maybe hardwire in a few other devices um, that I want to have all in my office and then have um, you know, the satellite somewhere else or better Wi-Fi throughout the home would be great. Only having one ethernet port is a big drawback to this device. I though do understand that for most people, that's probably not an important issue for you. So I'm gonna give that a, just a heads up on that information. Overall though, very pleased with it. it. It does look attractive. This is something that I, if I had this sitting out in an area where people would see it, I wouldn't be like, oh man, don't look at that ugly Wi-Fi router. The other thing about it too is ease of use. Very easy to use. The app was easy to do and set up. Just make sure you carefully read each step during the setup on your phone or tablet that you use to set up your device. But there you go. My opinion is this is probably an 8 out of 10. It's not the strongest Wi-Fi router I've ever tested. Um, the speed and performance was though comparable to my Netgear Nighthawk that I have been very happy with over time. For an average home user, average core cutter, this is probably more than enough for you. If you struggle with dead spots and you want a little bit larger Wi-Fi coverage, something like the D-Link Cover here, the, the whole home Wi-Fi system will be a great option. I did do a lot of testing walking back and forth from my home from one end of the house to the other end of the house and I was able to have seamless coverage. So when it transitioned from one device to the next, I did not notice any drop in um, internet on my device, streaming YouTube videos and more, trying to go from one extreme to the next to force it to switch between devices midstream on YouTube and it worked smoothly without issues. So, hey, two thumbs up, very nice device. I'll put a link to it down in the show notes so you can learn more about this. And if you have any questions, let me know. If you're new here, hey, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. We would really appreciate it. Hopefully this 
test from a average user experience helped you make a purchasing decision? If it did, let me know. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We'll be back more with more core kind of news, tips, tricks, and reviews very soon.